My name is Jason Holmes. I've been playing golf for 30 years. Started when I was eight years old. Um, I've always been a self-taught swinger. I was always kind of afraid to uh, take lessons when I started learning to play. Um, one of the pros in my game has always just been feel for me. Uh, I've always had a good feel. I've got pretty good hands and I've always kind of relied on that. Uh, my reason for seeing Ted would be just to get some sense of consistency in my game and not have to rely so much on, uh, I guess you would call it my talents as far as being able to use my natural ability to actually hit the ball where I'm actually thinking it should be going. So what I'd like Ted to check out for me is just uh, what I can do to be more consistent um, as a professional. Uh, I've been an assistant pro at uh, a few country clubs over the last few years. I'm at Candlewood Country Club currently, and um, I'm very excited to be here to learn from Ted. Uh, I've been looking forward for this all week. <laughs> Hey Jason, how are you? What's going on, Coach? Pretty good. Um, we're very good friends. We're from the same um, club. Uh, Jason's probably one of the best club pros around in California. Um, I always liked his swing. He's more feel. Uh, his tempo is one of the best. So today, since he, I think it should be about balanced out. It, could, it should be a little feel and be a little more technical too. So his rhythm and timing has always been good. Today we're just gonna work more on the club face angle, try to get him to be more consistent day in, day out, not rely too much on the feel. So I'm gonna try to kind of balance him out where, yes, feel is very important. Rhythm is, tempo is very important, but a little angle here, try to get him to draw the ball or fade the ball at his will, not just rely on too much on the feel, okay? Let's uh, look at his swing. It's a pretty good swing. So right here. So Jason has a really good setup. Uh, it's very technical. If you look at it right here, it's very, very, one of the best. He's really in that square. Everything is very balanced. Over here on this side too. It's like really balanced right here. Very good. He has one of the best uh, setup. Takeaway. That's textbook right there. You, so this is really good takeaway where his hand is traveling under the chin and the club face angle is matching with his spine angle. So that's ideal takeaway. That's a very good takeaway. At the top, it's really good. And one of the reason uh, he does have tendency to kind of miss the ball to the right a little bit. Because if you look at the top right here, he gets it perfect. And then, same thing, he, when he kind of goes a little too long, his first move is what's causing it to little cut the ball. So he gets it right on perfectly on plane. And then he actually becomes laid off because he's, he's rushing it with his right shoulder. Okay? So, if you look at his swing right now, and he's got the little lift, it's coming a little too steep over the top. That's why last couple balls he hit. Little, little to the right, little cutty and cutty. So he's putting a little cut spin on the ball. I mean, side spin of 300 is not that a lot. As long as you keep it 10% of the back spin, it's just a little baby curve. But the reason I'm pointing this out because his level, sometimes he wants to get rid of the fade. He wants a perfect straight shot or maybe draw, okay? So today, I'm gonna work on his backswing. Today, I'm gonna try to get rid of that last minute, little lift. So sometimes, not always a big swing is not always the best swing. You want, you want to have a more compact swing where keep it, as long as you keep your nice shoulder turn 90 degrees, the club doesn't have to go all the way through parallel. Okay, Jason, let's set up. Okay, lay back. Straight back, down. So we get it perfect here. We don't want that little extra long lift. Okay. We just want to keep that club more in front of you. And here, I'm going to put a little shaft right here. And then just bring it down. There you go. Take it back. 
and down. This is gonna be three quarter swing. It's not 100%, it's only 75%, but you, you can watch this uh, distance. He, the guy is so strong, he, we don't need that little extra long swing. <coughs> nice. Let's go again. That was a good path. So I know he likes a little baby cut, but today we're gonna work on more straight shot. So the one of the reason why he likes to cut, he sets up a little open. So let go here, okay. relax. And then group of few. That's more straight. He has a little open to so he can hit a little cut, but today we're gonna work on this straight shot. That space is more square. Even yeah, there you go. A little drop it in to the top. I'm gonna hold it right here. There you go. There you go. So two combination there. Um, I had the face look, he has a little open because he likes that baby cut, but for him to hit a nice baby draw or dead straight shot, we do have to make that club face square. And if you look at his swing right now, we got that club more front of him right here. That's a good looking back swing. Right here, that's all he needs. And then it's coming down more shallow, more hands more down front of him, back to his where under the chin is. And then He's got that swinging right down the line. That's why he, now he's swinging more straight down the line with the square face, which is like zero path, and almost had no side spin on the ball. So that's the reason why it just hit a little, little tiny draw. So his setup is really good, everything's good. And then leaving the club face open, it is kind of his background feel. Like he likes, okay, I'm gonna hit a little baby cut, I'm just gonna leave the club face open. It's just something he just does it naturally. But I'm here to show him that, hey, if we wanna get that ball a little bit more square, let's be really precise with the club face angle. And a lot of amateurs or even the pros, they have the face like a little too close, a little too open. And at his level, level or if you want to be become better golfer it's not just your alignment you also got to be very square with the club face angle so one of the example I could give is when I was working with Lydia before she went to BMW to win a championship her grip was good her club face um, alignment everything was really good and first 20 minutes her ball was missing a little left and I look back her grip is fine stance is fine ball position is fine but the thing is I noticed that her face was a little aiming left about three degrees left so even the divot was coming out perfectly and everything looked good, she wasn't flipping. The ball was a little bit left and I looked back and I said, Lydia, your club face is a little closed. So let's reset, let's get that face really square and then grip it from there. Even though she had a proper grip, the face was closed, if she were to square it up, it would become stronger. So aligning that um, club square, it's not just putting, even long clubs, you gotta be really square. So I guess my question would be, uh, what drill could I use to actually practice that on a regular basis? Great question. So if you look at tour, if, if you look at on TV and there's a bunch of coaches standing behind the pros before they tee off, as you need a good spotter. You need somebody you could trust. And in our club, you could ask other fellow pros to say, hey, it's my club face square. This is, some, alignment is something you can't just do it yourself. There's no really a drill for it. As alignment, as, there's a couple things you could do. You could put a stick and pick it, put a square and try to square up the face like this. So I'll show you right now. It's like more here. So put it across like this, right on your ball position. There you go, square. And then when you set up first one, you're gonna try to square up to this one, okay? And then when you hit to the ball, we're gonna try to make it straight to the line. Okay. So this is something that you could do it in the range for your alignment and your club face angle. There you go. And if you're on the golf course, you need somebody to spot for you. So there's someone you could trust and stuff, say, am I in square? But if you don't have a spotter, this is the best way to do it on the range. <laughs>